Okay, we're going to want to keep this first thing in mind because it's going to be true for quite a while. We want to get the squared thing by itself. Okay. What is the thing that's being squared? N. N is being squared, not 5, right? 5 is not being squared. So we want to get everything away from N squared to start with. Right. So first things first, what do we do? Add 17, get that out of here. 5n squared equals negative 2. And then? <coughs> divide by 5. Great, now we've gotten the, the square thing by itself. If we're just solving for n squared, if we're trying to get that like variable by itself, uh, we'd be good, except for we have one more thing to do. Because this is what n squared is equal to. This is what you get if you square n. All right, so how do we figure out what n is? Take the square root of both sides. So what's n equal to? If it was the square root of 2 fifths, no problem. There's a number that if you multiply by itself, it gives you 2 fifths. It won't be very pretty. It'll be a decimal. It'll live forever. Uh, you can never actually really write down fully accurately. But this number exists. This number does not exist. You'll, you, you can't have the square root of any negative number, at least not as far as we're concerned in algebra called imaginary numbers that we have to include. Oh. Alright, so as we said, we can't take the square root of a negative number, or at least we'll consider it to be uh, in algebra one a situation that is impossible. We can't take the square root of a negative number. There's no number that we've ever seen that can multiply by itself to give a negative number. Okay? Any more discussion needed on that? We discussed it, you know, last time, but if that doesn't make sense, then we can discuss it more. What was next? 34. 34, okay. As I said, the last problem, the thing to do is get the square thing, whatever squared by itself. What's being squared here? x plus 4, the whole parentheses is being squared. So we don't want the 6. How will we counter this 6? Divide the whole thing by 6. Divide the whole thing by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 18 divided by 6 is 3. All right, now we got the square thing by itself. When we get to that stage, how do we cancel out the square, the square here? With what? Take the square root. Square and square root cancel, we get x plus 4 equals what? The square root of 3 plus or minus the square root of 3. Remember when you take the square root of both sides, you include the plus and the minus, positive and negative. Okay, I'll just say that a little bit differently so you get an idea what that is. How big is the square root of 3 do you think without using your calculator first? Take a guess. How big is the square root of 3? Is it 5? One point something, what's the reasoning behind that? Okay, because because one point five is half of three, so maybe the square root of three is somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. Yeah? Okay, so two times two is four. And if we go too small, like one, one times one is one. So somewhere between one and two, because one times one is one, two times two is four, we want to get three. So, yes, we were right. 1.73 is the square root of three. So plus or minus 1.73 is about what the square root of three is. We want to get x by itself, what do we do? Subtract four. Subtract four. Subtract four. X equals negative four plus or minus the square root of 2. That means negative 4 plus the square root of 3, and 
negative 4 minus the square root of 3, or negative 4 plus or minus 1.73, which is our approximation for the square root of 3. Notice that we cannot do something like this and get plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Okay. Uh, Really, you gotta, you gotta think about what you're doing. If you're trying that, you're just hoping that that happens, hoping that magic works, okay? That's definitely not the case. I mean, for one thing, if I take the square root of three, that exists, and I could subtract four from that, I can't find the square root of negative one, it's a negative number, okay? I can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, for another thing, I mean, just try it out. Try taking the square root of ne or taking negative four, adding the square root of three. Try taking the square root of negative one. It won't be the same thing. Okay, so the square root of say of some number plus some other number is not the square root of adding them together or subtracting them or anything like that. So don't do that. So we need to take negative four and add square root of three and subtract the square root of three, we get our two solutions. Negative four plus the square root of three is approximately So those are two solutions. Good? Good? Good. Any questions? Ready to show me what you can do on your own? Do a little review? Sounds like it. Okay, as problems we've done so far. We want to get the square thing by itself, x being squared. The x is being squared, not a parentheses, just the, the x. We'll add 10 both sides, 2x squared equals 10. If we take x squared, we'll divide by 2 to get 10. So we'll divide by 2, squared equals 5. stuff, basic algebra, um, moving stuff around. Now for the new idea, what is the thing we do next? Take up. Take the square root of both sides. Okay. About how much is the square root of five? If you just live to the square root of five, that's fine. But let's get a decimal just so I have a scope of how big this is. Yeah? 2.24. Alright, all done? That's it? That's my answer? That's the answer I give on the test? I haven't forgotten anything? Yes? Um, plus or minus. Plus or minus. Positive 2.24 times positive 2.24 is 5, you know, approximately. Put approximately here. Or negative 2.24 times negative 2.24 is going to give us positive. whatever it is by itself. How will we do that? 15. 15. So we got uh, 22. And now we have something is squared equals something else. Now that, that square thing is by itself, we can take the square root of both sides, canceling the square and the square root. If you haven't used your calculator already, what's the uh, what's your guess for how big the square root of 22 is? What's it between? Four and three. Between 4 and 5. 4 squared is 60. 
Five squared is 25. 22 is between those two. So this is between 4 and 5. 4 point something. How do we get x by itself? So we're going to subtract 5. We'll subtract 5. So we've got a negative 5 here, plus or minus the square root of 22, which is 4 point something. Negative 5 plus the square root of 22, that's one solution. Or negative 5 minus the square root of 22, that's another solution. Plus the square root of 22, negative 0.231. Or change it to a minus, and we get negative 9.69. Questions there? Solving equations this way is definitely not something that's going away. It's not something of the past. It's something we're working up to using every time, every time we solve a quadratic. So if there's any questions about it, fire away. As you score those out of eight, I'll try to summarize this here. As you move on, we're going to turn every quadratic into a quadratic equation like this. By like this, I mean we're going to have a parentheses squared, and we're going to get that by itself and take the square root of both sides. That's a really handy thing to be able to do because we take, now, now we make every quadratic solvable. If we can get, take any quadratic and write it like this, we have a quantity squared, now we don't really have to, we don't have a need for factoring it, sending each factor to zero, and doing all that stuff, we approach it differently. So it's just a matter of getting it to look like that. So, four to that. Okay, so like I said before, um, we're gonna turn every quadratic uh, equation into an equation like this, where we have parentheses squared, get the square parentheses by itself, take the square root, that's how we're gonna solve quadratics. We want to do it that way because if it's factorable, it's probably faster to just go ahead and factor it, set each factor, zero, all that kind of stuff. But if it's not factorable, so far we would consider that unsolvable. We cannot find a solution to that one. So we now will be able to find a solution to any quadratic equation. And maybe even find out that some don't even have solutions because we try to take square roots of negative numbers. So to start with, before we get there, we've got these four quadratics, or a special kind of quadratic. I want you to factor each one of them. You should be able to factor, factor lots and lots of things. And uh, I want you to, once you're done, notice how they're all similar in some way, okay? Once you factor it, you should see how they're all similar. All right, so it looks like we're either finished or maybe a little hung up on, on something. I decided to put this one till last, because uh, it's probably the toughest one. Uh, let's start with this one. Remember factoring means we're going to put it into two sets of uh, parentheses so that when we multiply the parentheses together, that's what we get. Remember that there's going to be a number that goes there, a number that goes there. When we, for one thing, when we distribute everything from here over to here, we'll get x squared. Right? There's our x squared. We're also going to get this number is going to multiply by this other number, and we have to get 1, right? So, at least for this one, what times itself, or what times another number, what two numbers multiply together to give you 1? Okay. 1. Only 1 does that. Not like 36. 36 is lots of ways to multiply numbers to get 36. But in this case, it's pretty easy, because we know that this number times this number has to give us 1. And let's just double check and make sure that it, this is the factored form of this quadratic. We're going to multiply x times 1. That's going to give us x. 1 times x, that's also going to give us x. x plus x is 2x. Right? So we get x squared plus x plus x plus 1. x squared plus 2x plus 1. Um, let's go to this one. x and an x. To get our x times x is x squared. All right. We're also going to have to multi multiply a number 
by another number to get 9. That could be 1 times 9, right? That's 9. Is that right? Why not? I got 9. Why isn't it right? They don't add to 6. They would add to 10. So if this is x squared plus 10x plus 9, that would work. But it's a 6. So not 1 times 9. What else multiplies to 9? 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. You get x squared plus 3x. Here you get the x squared. x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. x squared plus, we put those together, you get 6x plus here, change color, button. Gotta get x times x is x squared. We also need two numbers that multiply together to make 36. Uh, that's uh, 9 times 4, 12 times 3, 6 times 6, 1 times 36. So we try all these different possibilities, and Danielle? What should we do? 6 and 6. If that's correct, then we should be able to multiply together and get this quadratic. Right? So x times x is x squared. x times 6 is 6x. Six, 6 times x is 6x. Six, 6 times 6 is 36. Yep, 6, x plus 6x six does give 12x, that's right. x x. Change this because why not? Change this to a minus a minus fifty x. All right, so we need two numbers that multiply together to make six hundred and twenty-five. right, except for, since I've changed it, why is this wrong? It should be minus 50, so what can we change? X minus 25 and X minus 25. We change the sign on each. That. What? Just one? Like this is plus? If we do plus, if we do just one, we'll get negative 625. We don't want that. We'll also get negative 25x and positive 25x, and they'll cancel each other out. So we'll change both. All right. So before I had you factor these, I said they would all be similar in some way. Now, how are they all similar? What do you mean by that? saying that we could rewrite each of these like this. Instead of writing two identical factors, we can write this one factor squared. Does that make sense? Like 2 times 2 is 2 squared. 5 times 5 is 5 squared. x plus 1 times x plus 1 is x plus 1 squared. That's what we mean when we say squared. We say one thing times itself. Something times an identical copy of that thing. x plus 3 squared, x plus 6 squared, x minus 25 squared times itself. So we get two identical factors when we factor these quadratics. These are what we call perfect square. Okay, so the first part of it is perfect square. Perfect square because when you have two identical factors multiplied together, that's a perfect square. A perfect square trinomial. A trinomial because we have three nomials, three terms, three numbers. When we factor this trinomial, we get a perfect square, a perfect square, a perfect square every time. So what we're going to do is turn every quadratic, uh, it's going to have a trinomial in it, 
we're going to turn it into a perfect square trinomial so that we can write it as something squared and use the square root idea. We can experiment with that idea a little bit. Let's say I had x squared plus 14x. What I'm missing is that number right there. Let's see, would that number be 40? Can you factor that? Go ahead and try and factor. So you know what the number needs to be. Uh, that's good. Hold on to that for a second. This is factorable. I did pick numbers that would, that would make this factorable. Uh, let's see if we can come up with that factorization real quick. I just want to contrast what we want and what we have right now. Now it's factorable, and that's great. If it turns out to be factorable, go ahead and factor it. Uh, if it's equal to zero, solve it. Okay, this stuff. But if it's, especially if it's not factorable at all, uh, then we're kind of stuck. But what'd you say, Zane? If we made this not 40, like if there was a 40 there, we would wish there was a 49. Because what'll happen when there's a 49? Now, when that's 49 instead of 40, how does that factor? Or x plus 7 times itself, x plus 7 squared. So that's the first part of the you know, procedure. Figure out what does this number have to be? Could it be, like, maybe there's, it's, there's multiple possibilities. Could it be something other than 49? Other number? I'll just leave that to you. You think about that for a second. Could it possibly be something other than 49? Some other number that would cause it to factor just the way we want. Or maybe there's only one number possible. To help continue to answer that question, let's try x squared plus 20x plus. That number would have to go there. So factors to two identical factors. Would it be 100? Yeah, it would be 100. Okay. What, how would it factor? X plus 20. Great, great. Let's do another one. And we'll talk about it a little more in depth here. Uh, X squared plus um, 18x. What would have to go? as x plus 9 and x plus 9 or x plus 9 squared. All right. If you feel like you haven't caught on yet, that's fine. Now I'll ask uh, Zane. You came up with 49 first. How'd you come up with it so quickly? How'd you know it had to be 49? Because uh, 7 plus 7 is 14, so 7 times 7 is 49. Okay, very nice. Because, uh, well, I mean, why did you even get there? Why did you decide it had to be... Seven and seven. They are factors of fourteen. Or no. Well, seven is a factor of fourteen. Yes, it is. Um, no, that's not exactly what we need, though. You so you saw fourteen. Half of fourteen. Yeah. So this number, this number, this number will always be what? Then? Half of uh, that, right? The number is multiplied by x, what we call the coefficient of x. All right? Uh, 
Courtney, how did you come up with it? Okay, so 20 was important as you were trying to figure this out. Okay, and you looked at 20, and, and what did you do next? What did you, what did you say to yourself? What did you try to figure out next? Well, first you saw 20, and then you, why did you know it had to be 10 and 10? Why not uh, 5 and 4? Or, well, no, we want to we add to 20, so why not 15 and 5? 15 plus 5 is 20. How did you know you had to break it down to 10 and 10? Okay, 10 is half of 20. How did you know that it had to be half and not some other? Why can't we do 15 plus 5 or 17 plus 3 or? But 100 is what Courtney decided it needed to be, right? Isn't that right? Like you figured out how to do 49. Courtney figured out 100. Figured out 81. is write it as something squared. That means two things that are identical. Those two things have to be identical to each other. This number has to be the same as this number. If it's not, we can't write it as something squared. You only get two identical factors, identical, identical. If these two factors are identical, and we multiply it out and we get this number here, all we've described just now is two identical numbers that add to this number. We're describing half of a number. We're always going to break it down so that this is half. That number is going to be half of whatever is there. Half of 18, half of 20, half of 14. And then that number that goes last here, the constant, will just be whatever you get when you multiply that number by itself. Okay. Let's try. So you've seen three examples worked out for you. So I'm going to give you one and see if you can produce. What is that magic number? What is that number that you need to be? And the answer to the question earlier is there is only one number that will work. Okay? Let's do x squared plus uh, 22x plus. Your job is to figure out what is that number right there. Okay, so we want this to factor so that both of these factors are identical to each other. It means the same number has to go there and there. When we multiply this out, get x plus, right, let's put question mark there. Get question mark x plus question mark x has to come out to 22x. So what does that number have to be? 11. It has to be half of 22. So 11 is the guy that goes right there. And now that we know that that's 11, we know that when we multiply this together, we're going to get 11 times 11 is Well, this side is perfect. It's a perfect square trinomial. We can factor it as x plus 11 squared is 25. And what do we do now as we try to solve for x? Just like in the last section, it's a square root. The square root of x plus 11 squared is x plus 11. On this side, what do we have? Minus 5. We subtract 11. We subtract 11 from 5. Subtract 11 from negative 5. We get two solutions. 5 minus 11, negative 6. Negative 5 minus 11, negative 16. Those are our two solutions. Now that's an easy example because 25 has a nice whole number, perfect square root, you know. But let's see how we would use this another scenario. Say we had x squared plus um, 12x. Okay. And then like say we didn't, this is kind of optimal, we don't have any number there. Okay, let's say that's equal to 
um, four. Now, if you tried this the old way, if you tried to, to uh, get one side equal to zero, and try to factor this, there's no factoring this, it's unfactorable. There's nothing that multiplies the negative four and also adds to 12. Okay, so we back up. We realize that's not possible. But if we leave it like this, you notice I left a blank spot for the number that is perfect for this, uh, for this situation. Anybody figured out what that number should be so that it could factor as a perfect square? Yeah? 36. Now wait, what did I just do? I just made one, two, three, four pen strokes. And what did I do on the left side of the equation just now? Just a second ago, the way it started was x squared plus 12x equals 4. And then, there's that guy. What did I just do? What is it that I have done on the left side? Add a 36. If I add 36 on the left side, then what? Add 36 on the right side. You can't do one thing to one side and not to the other. It would be unbalanced. So we add 36 to this side and to the other side. Okay, so on this side we get 40, but the great thing on this side now is we've gotten the perfect thing, the perfect number, the perfect constant, so that this will factor as a perfect square. What will it factor as? Okay. X plus 6 times X plus 6. X plus 6 squared. So now that we've written, written it that way, What's, what's the next thing we can do? Yeah? You take the square root. So we've, now you can see how we're going to get a, a couple of solutions here in a couple of moves. Uh, we've taken something that was unsolvable before. We had no way to factor it, and therefore we couldn't, we couldn't solve it. And we've taken it from that to something that is solvable, and we have made every quadratic solvable x plus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 40, whatever that comes out to be. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So x plus 6, x, not x plus 6, x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 40. This is a fine final answer, negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 40. If you want to get the decimals, you can take negative 6. 6 plus square root of 40, after you turn on your calculator, plus the square root of 40. Uh, oh, so 0 0.325, change it to negative 6 minus the square root of 40, negative 12.324. Okay, so that We have made something that is unfactorable, unsolvable, and something that is solvable if we uh, turn that into a perfect square triangle wheel. Now, because we like filled in this blank so that it's a perfect square, that's why this is called completing the square. This is the completing part. We find that number. This is the square part. When we complete this trinomial, we get a perfect square when we factor. So let me give you a problem of your own to work on. is find that perfect number, the magic number that will allow us to factor that left side 
as a perfect square. Perfect square meaning two identical factors, two identical parentheses multiplied by each other. Uh, to help you see what that needs to be, these two parentheses are going to be identical, so you can write it as just you know one of them squared times itself. Right? X X. These two numbers will have to be the exact same number, right? So that we can write it as squared. What will that number have to be? So that number, right? When, so that when we multiply it all out, we get negative eight x, right? That's the part where we add them together. So what would these two numbers be? Yeah. That's right. Negative four. Negative four. Or as we said earlier, half of that will always be that way. These two guys right here will always be half of this coefficient of x, half of the coefficient of x. So if we were to multiply these back out, what number would we get here? What constant would we get? 16 plus 16. Okay, now notice I, what I have done is I've added 16 to the left side so that it factors just the way that I want. Okay, but I had to bring in a 16 from, from nowhere, right? I've added 16 to the left side, so we need to add 16 to the right side as well. So we get 20 there. And just like we've done so many times, I won't even make you tell me what we're going to do. We take the square root of both sides. Add 4. We get 4 plus or minus the square root of 20. You can take 4 and add the square root of 20. Take 4 and subtract the square root of 20. You get your two solutions. difference between the way this looks and the way that looks. Right, see if you can figure out how to deal with it. All right, so as I walk around, I see um, some of you trying to factor it the way it looks right now. I didn't really think about it very hard, but I, I don't think it's factorable. Is it, does it turn to be factorable? I don't think x squared plus 24x plus 35 is factorable. And besides, even if it were factorable, it doesn't factor in the way that we want it to factor. How is it that we want it to factor? Anybody like just put that succinctly? What, how is it that we would like the left side to factor? We like this to exactly. We want it to factor like this: x plus 12 and x plus 12. That's how we want it to factor. We want it to uh, come out with x squared plus 24x plus this number. Okay, well, if we ignore this for a second, the only way to make that happen with identical factors, right? The factors have to be identical. That's the key thing. We want both of these factors to be the same. They would have to have numbers that are half of 24, right? So, when we go to multiply these back out. What do we get when we do 12 times 12? 144. That's not 144. Okay. So however it makes sense to you, deal with that. 35 is not the right number. 144 is the right number. Okay. Two ways I can think that would be like the, the most common ways. Um, well, 35 is not 144, so I've got to add some on to get 144, right? You can do it that way. How much would I have to add to 35? 35 to get 144. Yeah, 109. 109. Okay, so I'm going to add 109 to both sides so that 35 turns into 144, just like I want. Okay, so now this is 144. And this side is, well, 27 plus 109, uh, 136. Okay, great. Uh, now, get x plus 12 squared equals uh, 136. Take the square root of both sides, subtract 12 on both sides, there you have it. Okay, 
another way that I saw more people doing, more than, than this approach. All right, so 35 is not 144. It's not the number that I want it to be. So I'll just cancel it out on this side, make myself a fresh you know, blank spot for that number to go. X squared plus 24x uh, plus nothing, right, the blank spot, equals negative 8. And now I figure out what that number has to be. Now we've already figured out that number has to be 144. Add 144 to both sides. X squared is 20, well, you know how it factors. Let's shorten this up. X plus 12 squared, negative 8, plus 144. What do you think that's going to be? 136. Take the square to both sides, subtract both, both sides, you have to 